CIET NCERT presents Contemporary India The audio textbook in geography for class 10 part 2 Page 14 Chapter 2 Forest and wildlife resources This chapter has 9 pages Friends to begin with we are presenting to you a small couplet excerpted from a lepcha folk song from northern part of west bengal narak my lord you are the creator of music in the world of lepchas o narak my lord let me dedicate myself to you let me gather your music from the springs the rivers the mountains the forest the insects and the animals let me gather your music from the sweet breeze and offer it to you we share this planet with millions of other living beings starting from microorganisms to bacteria lichens to banyan trees elephants and blue whales this entire habitat that we live in has immense biodiversity we humans along with all living organisms form a complex web of ecological system in which we are only a part and very much dependent on this system for our own existence for example the plants animals and microorganisms recreate the quality of air we breathe the water we drink and the soil that produces our food without which we cannot survive forests play a key role in the ecological system as these are also the primary producers on which all other living beings depend biodiversity and biological diversity is immensely rich in wildlife and cultivated species diverse in form and function but closely integrated in a system through multiple network and interdependencies flora and fauna in india if you look around you will be able to find that there are some animals and plants which are unique in your area in fact india is one of the world's richest countries in terms of its vast array of biological diversity and has nearly 8% of the total number of species in the world that is estimated to be 1.6 million this is possibly twice or thrice the number yet to be discovered you have already studied in detail about the extent and variety of forest and wildlife resources in india you may have realized the importance of these resources in our daily life these diverse flora and fauna are so well integrated in our daily life that we take these for granted but lately they are under great stress mainly due to insensitivity to our environment some estimates suggest that at least 10% of india's recorded wild flora and 20% of its mammals are on the threatened list many of these would now be categorized as critical that is on the verge of extinction like the cheetah pink-headed duck mountain quail forest spotted owlet and plant like manduka insignis a wild variety of mahua and habadia heptanuron that is a species of grass in fact no one can say how many species may have already been lost today we only talk of the larger and more visible animals and plants that have become extinct but what about smaller animals like insects and plants page 15 vanishing forests the dimensions of deforestation in india are staggering the forest and tree cover in the country is estimated 
at 78.92 million hectare which is 24.01% of the total geographical area that is dense forest 12.24% open forest 8.99% and mangrove just 0.14% according to the state of forest report given in 2013 the dense forest cover has increased by 10098 square kilometer since 1997 however this apparent increase in the forest cover is due to plantation by different agencies do you know over 81000 species of fauna and 47000 species of flora are found in this country so far Of the estimated 47,000 plant species, about 15,000 flowering species are endemic, that is, indigenous to India. Activity. Find out stories prevalent in your region which are about the harmonious relationship between human beings and nature. Do you know that among the larger animals in India? 79 species of mammals 44 of birds 15 of reptiles and 3 of amphibians are threatened nearly 1500 plant species are considered endangered flowering plants and vertebrate animals have recently become extinct at a rate estimated to be 50 to 100 times the average expected natural rate Let us now understand the different categories of existing plants and animal species based on the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources that is known as IUCN we can classify like this normal species species whose population levels are considered to be normal for their survival such as cattle sal pine rodents etc endangered species these are species which are in danger of extinction the survival of such species is difficult if the negative factors that have led to a decline in their population continue to operate the examples of such species are black buck crocodile indian wild ass indian rhino lion tailed macaque sangai that is brown ant deer in manipur etc vulnerable species these are species whose population has declined to levels from where it is likely to move into the endangered category in the near future if the negative factors continue to operate the examples of such species are blue sheep asiatic elephant and gangetic dolphin etc rare species species with small population may move into the endangered or vulnerable category if the negative factors affecting them continue to operate the examples of such species are the himalayan brown bear wild asiatic buffalo desert fox and hornbill etc endemic species These are species which are only found in some particular areas usually isolated by natural or geographical barriers Examples of such species are the Andaman teal Nicobar pigeon Andaman wild pig Mithun in Arunachal Pradesh Extinct species These are species which are not found after searches of known or likely areas where they may occur a species may be extinct from a local area region country continent or the entire earth examples of such species are the asiatic cheetah pink head duck figure 2.2 the picture given here shows a few extinct rare an endangered species page 16 asiatic cheetah where did they go 
the world's fastest land mammal, the cheetah. Echinoix jubantus is a unique and specialized member of the cat family and can move at the speed of 112 kilometers per hour. The cheetah is often mistaken for a leopard. Its distinguishing marks are the long teardrop-shaped lines on each side of the nose from the corner of its eyes to its mouth. Prior to the 20th century, cheetahs were widely distributed throughout Africa and Asia. Today, the Asian cheetah is nearly extinct to a decline of available habitat and prey. The species was declared extinct in India long back in 1952. What are the negative factors that cause such fearful depletion of flora and fauna? If you look around, you will be able to find out how we have transformed nature into a resource obtaining directly and indirectly from the forest and wildlife. Wood, barks, leaves, rubber, medicine, dyes, food, fuel, fodder, manure, etc. So it is we ourselves who have depleted our forests and wildlife. The greatest damage inflicted on Indian forests was during the colonial period due to the expansion of the railways, agriculture, commercial and scientific forestry and mining activities. Even after independence, agricultural expansion continues to be one of the major causes of depletion of forest resources. Between 1951 and 1980, According to the Forest Survey of India, over 26,200 square kilometer of forest area was converted into agricultural land all over India. Substantial part of the tribal belts, especially in the northeastern and central India, have been deforested or degraded by shifting cultivation, that is known as jhum, a type of slash and burn agriculture. Let us find out what is there in the box for us. Are colonial forest policies to be blamed? Some of our environmental activists say that the promotion of a few favoured species in many parts of India has been carried through the ironically termed enrichment plantation, in which a single commercially valuable species was extensively planted and other species eliminated. For instance, teak monoculture has damaged the natural forest in South India and cheer pine, that is, Pinus roxburghi, plantations in Himalayas have replaced the Himalayan oak, that is, Curiceus sep, and rhododendron forests. Page 17 Large-scale development projects have also contributed significantly to the loss of forests. Since 1951, over 50,000 square kilometer of forest was cleared for river valley projects. Clearing of forest is still continuing with projects like Narmada Sagar project in Madhya Pradesh, which would inundate 40,000 hectares of forest. Mining is another important factor behind deforestation. The Baksa Tiger Reserve in West Bengal is seriously threatened by the ongoing dolomite mining. It has disturbed the natural habitat of many species and blocked the migration route of several others, including the great Indian elephant. Many foresters and environmentalists hold the view that the greatest degrading factors behind the depletion of forest resources are grazing and fuel wood collection. Though there may be some substance in their argument, yet the fact remains that the substantial part of the fuel fodder demand is met by lopping rather than by felling entire trees. The forest ecosystems are repositories of some of the country's most valuable forest products, minerals and other resources that meet the demands of the 
rapidly expanding industrial urban economy. These protected areas thus mean different things to different people and therein lies the fertile ground for conflicts. The Himalayan U in trouble. The Himalayan U, which is known as the Taxus Valenciana, is a medicinal plant found in various parts of Himachal Pradesh and Arunachal Pradesh. A chemical compound called Taxil is extracted from the bark, needles, twigs and roots of this tree and it has been successfully used to treat some cancers. The drug is now the biggest selling anti-cancer drug in the world. The species is under great threat due to over-exploitation. In the last one decade, thousands of yew trees have dried up in various parts of Himachal Pradesh and Arunachal Pradesh. Figure 2.3 In this figure, there are three pictures shown. One, the tribal girls using bamboo saplings in a nursery at Mukhali near Silent Valley. The other picture is showing the tribal women selling minor forest produce. And in the third picture, the leaf litter collected by a few women folk. Page 18 Habitat destruction, hunting, poaching, over-exploitation, environmental pollution, poisoning and forest fires are factors which have led to the decline of India's biodiversity. Other important causes of environmental destruction are unequal access, inequitable consumption of resources and differential sharing of responsibility for environmental well-being. Overpopulation in third world countries is often cited as the cause of environmental degradation. However, an average American consumes 40 times more resources than an average Somalian. Similarly, the richest 5% of Indian society probably cause more ecological damage because of the amount they consume than the poorest 25%. The former shares minimum responsibilities for environmental well-being. The question is, who is consuming what, from where and how much? The destruction of forests and wildlife is not just biological issue. The biological loss is strongly correlated with the loss of cultural diversity. Such losses have increasingly marginalized and impoverished many indigenous and other forest-dependent communities who directly depend on various components of the forest and wildlife for food, drink, medicine, culture, spirituality, etc. Within the poor, women are affected more than men. In many societies, women bear the major responsibility of collection of fuel, fodder, water and other basic subsistence needs. As these resources are depleted, the drudgery of women increases and sometimes they have to walk for more than 10 kilometers to collect these resources. This causes serious health problems for women and negligence of home and children because of the increased hours of work which often has serious social implications. The indirect impact of degradation such as severe drought or deforestation, induced floods, etc. also hits the poor the hardest. Poverty in these cases is a direct outcome of environmental destruction. Therefore, forest and wildlife are vital to the quality of life and environment in the subcontinent. It is imperative to adapt to sound forest and wildlife conservation strategies. Do you know that over half of India's natural forests are gone? One third of its wetland drained out? 70% of its surface water bodies polluted? 
40% of its mangroves wiped out and with continued hunting and trade of wild animals and commercially valuable plants thousands of plant and animal species are heading towards extinction activity have you noticed any activity which leads to the loss of biodiversity around you write a note on it and suggest some measures to prevent it conservation of forest and wildlife in india conservation in the background of rapid decline in wildlife population and forestry has become essential but why do we need to conserve our forest and wildlife conservation preserves the ecological diversity and our life support systems water air and soil it also preserves the genetic diversity of plants and animals for better growth of species and breeding for example in agriculture we are still dependent on traditional crop varieties fisheries too are heavily dependent on the maintenance of aquatic biodiversity in the 1960s and 1970s conservationists demanded a national wildlife protection program the indian wildlife that is protection act was implemented in 1972 with various provisions for protecting habitats an all india list of protected species was also published the thrust of the program was towards protecting the remaining population of certain endangered species by banning hunting giving legal protection to their habitats and restricting trade in wildlife subsequently central and many state governments established national parks and wildlife sanctuaries about which you have already studied the central government also announced several projects for protecting specific animals which were gravely threatened including the tiger the one horned rhinoceros the kashmir stag or hangul three types of crocodiles these are the freshwater crocodile saltwater crocodile and the gharial the asiatic lion and others most recently the indian elephant black buck that is chinkara the great indian bustard that is godavan and the snow leopard etc have been given full or partial legal protection against hunting and trade throughout india figure 2.4 here given are two pictures showing rhino and deer in kaziranga national park page 19 project tiger tiger is one of the key wildlife species in the faunal web In 1973 the authorities realized that the tiger population had dwindled to 1827 from an estimated 55000 at the turn of the century the major threats to tiger population are numerous such as poaching for trade shrinking habitat depletion of prey based species growing human population etc the trade of tiger skins and the use of their bones in traditional medicines especially in the asian countries left the tiger population on the verge of extinction since india and nepal provide habitat to about 2/3 of the surviving tiger population in the world these two nations became prime targets for poaching and illegal trading project tiger One of the well publicized wildlife campaigns in the world was launched in 1973. Initially, it showed success as the tiger population went up to 4002 in 1985 and 4334 in 1989. But in 1993, the population of tiger had dropped to 3600. There were 39 tiger reserves in India covering an area of 32137.14 square kilometer. 
tiger conservation has been viewed not only as an effort to save an endangered species but with equal importance as a means of preserving biotypes of sizable magnitude corbett national park in uttarakhand sundarbans national park in west bengal bandavgarh national park in madhya pradesh sariska wild sanctuary in rajasthan manas tiger reserve in assam and peria tiger reserve in kerala are some of the tiger reserves of india the conservation projects are now focusing on biodiversity rather than on a few of its components there is now a more intensive search for different conservation measures increasingly even insects are beginning to find a place in conservation planning in the notification under wildlife act in 1980 and in 1986 several hundred butterflies moths beetles and one dragonfly have been added to the list of protected species in 1991 for the first time plants were also added to the list starting with six species page 20 A news item has appeared that states a few problems regarding our ecosystem and we are asked to find out the reasons for the mentioned problems. News item 1 states the gharial population has been at its lowest since the 1970s. What went wrong and what can we do? News item 2 states bird deaths blamed on dirty yamuna delhi government report points to toxic elements in stagnant water caption of the news item is gharial on the brink activity collect more information on the wildlife sanctuaries and national parks of india and cite their locations on the map of india types and distribution of forest and wildlife resources Even if we want to conserve our vast forest and wildlife resources it is rather difficult to manage control and regulate them in india much of its forest and wildlife resources are either owned or managed by government through the forest department or other government departments these are classified under the following categories Reserved and protected forests are also referred to as permanent forest estates maintained for the purpose of producing timber and other forest produce and for protective reasons. Madhya Pradesh has the largest area under permanent forests constituting 75% of its total forest area. Jammu and Kashmir, Andhra Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Kerala Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and Maharashtra have large percentages of reserved forests to its total forest area whereas Bihar, Haryana, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Odisha and Rajasthan have a bulk of it under protected forests. All northeastern states and parts of Gujarat have a very high percentage of their forests as unclass forest managed by local communities. First, reserved forests. More than half of the total forest land has been declared reserved forests. Reserved forests are regarded as the most valuable as far as the conservation of forest and wildlife resources are concerned second protected forests almost one third of the total forest area is protected forest as declared by the forest department this forest land are protected from any further depletion and the third category the unclassed forests These are other forests and wastelands belonging to both government and private individuals and communities. Page 21. Community and conservation. Conservation strategies are not new in our country. We often ignore that in India forests are also home to some of the traditional communities. 
In some areas of India, local communities are struggling to conserve these habitats along with government officials, recognizing that only this will secure their own long-term livelihood. In Sariska Tiger Reserve, Rajasthan, villagers have fought against mining by citing the Wildlife Protection Act. In many areas, villagers themselves are protecting habitats and explicitly rejecting government involvement. The inhabitants of five villages in the Alwar district of Rajasthan have declared 1,200 hectares of forest as Bhairavdev Dakov, that is Sonchuri, declaring their own set of rules and regulations which do not allow hunting and are protecting the wildlife against any outside encroachments. Sacred Groves, a wealth of diverse and rare species. Nature worship is an age-old tribal belief based on the premise that all creations of nature have to be protected. Such beliefs have preserved several virgin forests in pristine form called the sacred groves, that is, the forests of God and goddesses. These patches of forest or parts of large forests have been left untouched by the local people and any interference with them is banned. Certain societies rever a particular tree which they have preserved from time immemorial. The Mundas and the Santhals of Chotanagpur region worship Mawa, that is Basia Letfolia and Kadamba, that is Antokafalis Kadamba. Trees and the tribal of Odisha and Bihar worship the tamarind, that is Tamarindus indica and mango, that is Mangifera indica, trees during weddings. To many of us, people and banyan trees are considered sacred. Indian society comprises several cultures, each with its own set of traditional methods of conserving nature and its creations. Sacred qualities are often ascribed to springs, mountain peaks, plants and animals which are closely protected. You will find troops of macaques and langurs around many temples. They are fed daily and treated as a part of temple devotees. In and around Bishnoi villages in Rajasthan, herds of black buck, that is chinkara, Nilgai and peacocks can be seen as an integral part of the community and nobody harms them. The famous Chipko movement in the Himalayas has not only successfully resisted deforestation in several areas, but has also shown that community afforestation with indigenous species can be enormously successful. Attempts to revive the traditional conservation methods or developing new methods of ecological farming are now widespread. Farmers and citizens groups like Beej Bachao Andolan in Teri and Navadanya have shown that adequate levels of diversified crop production without the use of synthetic chemicals are possible and economically viable. In India, Joint Forest Management, that is GFM program, furnishes a good example for involving local communities in the management and restoration of degraded forests. The program has been in formal existence since 1988, when the state of Odisha passed the first resolution for joint forest management. JFM depends on the formation of local, that is village institutions, that undertake protection activities mostly on degraded forest land managed by the forest department. In return, the members of these communities are entitled to intermediary benefits like non-timber forest producers and share in the timber harvested by successful protection. The clear lesson from the dynamics of both environmental destruction and reconstruction in India is that local communities 
everywhere have to be involved in some kind of natural resource management. But there is still a long way to go before local communities are at the center stage in decision making. Accept only those economic or developmental activities that are people centric, environment friendly, and economically rewarding. Page 22. From the box. This saying is opined by Gautam Buddha in 487 BC. The tree is a peculiar organism of unlimited kindness and benevolence and makes no demand for its sustenance and extends generously the products of its life activity. It affords protection to all beings, offering shade even to the axemen who destroy it. Activity Write a short essay on any practices which you may have observed and practiced in your everyday lives that conserve and protect the environment around you. Exercises Question 1 Multiple choice questions 1. Which of these statements is not a valid reason for the depletion of flora and fauna? The choices given are A. Agricultural expansion B. Large-scale developmental projects C. Grazing and fuel wood collection and D. Rapid industrialization and urbanization 2. Which of the following conservation strategies do not directly involve community participation? The choices are A. Joint forest management B. Beach Bachao Andolan C. Chipko movement and D. Demarcation of wildlife sanctuaries Question 2 Match the following animals with their category of existence. There are two columns given here. Under the column animals and plants, we are given black buck, Asiatic elephant, Andaman wild pig, Himalayan brown bear and pink head duck. In the second column, we are given the category of existence. The categories are extinct, rare, endangered, vulnerable and endemic. Question 3. Match the following. Column A. Reserved forests, protected forests and unclassed forests. And in the column B, we are given the three choices which we need to match with the correct pair. Other forest and wastelands belonging to both government and private individuals and communities? Forests are regarded as most valuable as far as the conservation of forest and wildlife resources. And forest lands are protected from any further depletion. Question 4. Answer the following questions in about 30 words. 1. What is biodiversity? Why is biodiversity important for human lives? 2. How have human activities affected the depletion of flora and fauna? Explain. Question 5. Answer the following questions in about 120 words. 1. Describe how communities have conserved and protected forest and wildlife in India. 2. Write a note on good practices towards conserving forest and wildlife. Chapter 2. Forest and Wildlife Resources You were just listening to this chapter that contained Nine pages. This chapter was read by Shiba Mal. Thank you.